have you ever wondered what if our ancestors knew more than we think long before aeroplanes nuclear bombs or test tube babies india had it all hidden inside the mahabharata are secrets of flying machines mind control weapons and even communication without words these are not fairy tales they sound like lost science buried under time and dust when you hear these stories you won't just feel amazed you'll feel proud because this is the story of a civilization that touched the stars when the rest of the world was still learning to light fire let's uncover it one secret at a time for number 1 vimanas the flying machines of the mahabharata imagine this thousands of years ago long before aeroplanes or rockets our ancestors spoke of vimanas flying chariots that could soar across the sky and even travel to other worlds the mahabharata says the chariots shone like the sun and moved wherever the mind directed these were not made of simple wood or metal they had advanced engines special fuels and could even disappear or become invisible texts like vaimanika shastra describe the structure circular triangular sometimes huge like flying cities some could carry hundreds of warriors others were small used by gods or kings they could rise vertically hover in the air and move faster than the wind sounds like science fiction right but maybe it's not fiction at all maybe it's a memory of an ancient technology lost in time waiting to be rediscovered for number 2 astra technology divinely programmed weapons now imagine a battlefield where warriors didn't just shoot arrows they launched astra divine weapons powered by mantras each astra was like a smart missile activated by sound and thought When a warrior chanted a specific mantra, the weapon understood his command. It knew who to target, when to strike, and even how much power to use. The Mahabharata describes many such weapons. The Brahmastra, brighter than a thousand suns, could destroy cities in seconds. The Narayanastra automatically targeted the entire enemy army, and the Pashupatastra, granted only by Lord Shiva, was so powerful that even gods feared it these weapons were not just about destruction they were about discipline and consciousness if misused they could destroy the user himself so the true strength wasn't in the weapon it was in the mind that controlled it for number 3 sanjaya's remote vision the first live broadcast close your eyes and imagine this the great war of kurukshetra is raging thousands of soldiers elephants and chariots fill the battlefield but sitting far away in the palace of hastinapura an old blind king named dhritarashtra wants to know what's happening right now and that's when something unbelievable happens his adviser sanjaya begins describing every detail every movement every emotion as if he's watching it live on a giant screen how He was blessed with divya drishti divine vision by sage vyasa through this power sanjaya could see and hear everything happening miles away in real time in simple words it was the world's first live broadcast long before satellites or cameras existed today we use drones and tv but thousands of years ago sanjaya's mind was the antenna connected directly to the cosmic network of knowledge for number 4 time manipulation the chakra vyuha technique now let's step onto the battlefield of kurukshetra once again among the many war formations there was one that even the bravest feared the chakra vyuha it wasn't just a circle of soldiers it was a living spiral rotating like a vortex constantly changing shape to enter it a warrior had to match its rhythm its energy and its timing one wrong move and he would be trapped forever only a few heroes knew the secret to breaking it one of them was abimanyu the young son of arjuna he knew how to enter but not how to come out and yet he fought with unmatched courage proving his strength and heart 
Some say the Chakravyuha was more than strategy. It was time and energy in motion, a system that played with synchronization, direction, and flow, almost like manipulating time itself. For number five, nuclear warfare, the Brahmastra effect. Imagine a weapon so powerful that it could destroy everything in sight, mountains, cities, even entire armies. That weapon was the Brahmastra. The Mahabharata describes it as shining with the light of 10,000 suns. When it struck, the ground burned, the skies thundered, and people's hair and nails fell off from an invisible fire. No wind blew, no water remained, everything turned to ash. Sounds familiar? Modern scientists say this description matches the effects of a nuclear explosion. Intense heat, blinding light, radiation, and total destruction. Some believe that ancient ruins like Moenjo Daro show traces of high radiation, as if such weapons were once used. But unlike today's bombs, the Brahmastra was not fired with machines. It was activated with mantra and mind. It shows that ancient people understood energy at a cosmic level, where thought itself could control power. For number six, genetic engineering, the birth of the Karavas. Now let's move from the battlefield to the royal palace of Hastinapura. Queen Gandhari was expecting a child, but her pregnancy went on for years. When she finally gave birth, it wasn't a baby. It was a mass of flesh, lifeless and strange. Sage Vyasa arrived, divided that mass into 100 small pieces, and placed each in a jar filled with special herbs and ghee. Months later, each jar produced a living baby, the hundred sons of Dhritarashtra, known as the Karavas. Think about it. That sounds exactly like test tube babies or cloning. Not just that. Even Kunti, the mother of the Pandavas, invoked divine powers through mantras to conceive children with specific abilities, like strength from Vayu or wisdom from Dharma. It seems our ancestors understood genetic selection and energy-based conception, a spiritual science that mixed biology with divine resonance. For number seven, telepathic communication, the divine frequency network. Imagine a time when people didn't need phones, letters, or even sound to talk. In the Mahabharata, sages and gods communicated through thought and vibration, instantly across any distance. This was called Divya Sanchar, divine communication. It worked through the power of the mind, tuned to a certain frequency of consciousness. When a sage wanted to send a message, he would simply meditate, focus his energy, and the other person, miles away, would receive it clearly like a mental broadcast. Rishis often spoke to gods and even to people far across kingdoms using this method. No cables, no satellites, just pure mind-to-mind -mind connection. Modern science calls it telepathy or quantum communication. But our ancients already used it thousands of years ago. They believe that when the mind is pure and focused, distance disappears and the entire universe becomes your communication network. For number eight, weaponized sound, the Shabda Vedi Astra. Now imagine a weapon that didn't need eyes to aim. It could find its target through sound. That was the Shabda Vedi Astra, a weapon guided by vibration and echo. In the Mahabharata, warriors like Arjuna and King Dasharatha from the Ramayana used this kind of astra. They could shoot an arrow in total darkness simply by listening to the direction of sound. Once the mantra was chanted, the weapon locked on to that frequency, just like today's sound-guided missiles or sonar systems. It worked on a deep understanding of acoustics and energy waves how sound travels, reflects, and resonates. The ancients believed that every sound carries a signature vibration, and if you can match it, you can control it. 
This shows how ancient science combined mantras, focus, and physics, turning even a sound into a deadly force of precision. For number nine, resurrection and consciousness transfer, the Sanjanivi secret. Now imagine this, a warrior lies lifeless on the battlefield, and yet hope is not lost, because somewhere hidden in the Himalayas grows a magical herb, the Sanjanivi. It was said that this herb could bring the dead back to life. In some versions of the Mahabharata and related stories, sages used this divine knowledge to restore life force, not through machines, but through energy and vibration. The idea was simple. Life is not just a body, it's a frequency, a flow of prana, cosmic energy. If that flow is restored, the body can live again. Some great sages could even transfer consciousness, moving their awareness into another body, just like shifting data from one device to another. It may sound impossible today, but it shows how deeply our ancestors understood energy, consciousness, and the science of life itself. For number 10, Celestial Communication Networks, the Deva's Ether Grid. Now, imagine a universe where gods, sages, and even planets could talk instantly. No Wi-Fi, no internet, only Akasha, the cosmic space that connects everything. In the Mahabharata and other Vedic texts, this was known as the Akasha Path, a divine communication network used by the Devas. Through this invisible medium, messages could travel across galaxies in a flash. It was like a spiritual internet, powered not by electricity, but by pure consciousness. Every thought, every action was recorded in what the ancients called the Akashic Records, a cosmic memory bank of the entire universe. Nothing was ever truly lost. Everything existed as vibration in the ether. Today, scientists talk about cloud data and quantum communication. But thousands of years ago, our ancestors already spoke of a cosmic data field, where all minds, souls, and stars were connected as one. Final thoughts. The lost wisdom of the Mahabharata. Thousands of years ago, our ancestors spoke of flying chariots, energy weapons, and the power of thought. Today, we call them science and technology, but they called it dharma and consciousness. Maybe the Mahabharata is not just past history, maybe it's memory of a time when humans and gods walked together, mastering both spirit and science. We think we are modern, yet they already knew what we are still discovering. So the real question is, did we move forward or did we forget who we once were? Because the future of science might just lie in our past. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more inspiring content. See you in the next one.